one of the things I loved about season one, obviously it's set aboard the USS Discovery, but mm -hmm. your character was discovering so much about herself as right. the season went on. Yes. Um, how does she evolve in season two? Well, uh, the evolution continues in season two, that's for sure. The personal discovery, the identity discovery continues. Um, you know, some deep um, moral mistakes were made, but some serious maturation happened as a result of it. And now it's important for me to, as Burnham, for me to uh, now find how my emotion informs, uh, how my logic informs my emotion, because I've, I've known how my emotion informs my logic, but I need to find the synergy. I need to fully accept my humanity, but also fully accept my Vulcan indoctrination and find how they can work together to serve the needs of the many. We saw it serving the needs of the few quite a bit in season one. So now I have to find how it serves the needs of the many and, and also just continue that redemptive um, journey, um, which uh, now uh, is about forgiving myself. One thing I loved about the first season was just um, aboard the discovery, all these characters were discovering so much about themselves. And I just wondered um, in what ways your characters evolve in season two. Hmm. Well, about the discovering more about yourself. Uh, um, Saru absolutely f discovers more about himself and about his about his species, about Kelpians. Um, something happens about mid-season that, um, that we visit my home planet again, and um, and we did, uh, I, I learn things about my species that I didn't know, and he'd helped through this moment. And oh my gosh, so uh, uh, it's a game changer, and. Um, I'll leave, it, I'll leave it there for you. Ah! What are you saying? <laughs> uh, Tilly's starting at such an early point in her tra trajectory, ultimate trajectory. I think that she's still discovering how to be a person in the world and how to be a member of Starfleet. A uh, big step has been taken because Saru very kindly recommended her for the command training program. Mm -hmm. And now she's an ensign, so she's, she's moving forward. But she has to find out what that sort of strength and leadership really is. And she's going to face challenges on the way to that lesson. I just thought the relationship between your characters, as we saw it in season one, was so beautifully handled. Your performances, the writing, and just how it was developed and revealed to us throughout the Thank season. You. What you. does it mean to each of you personally to be portraying this couple? I mean, uh, uh, first and foremost, you know, to be able not to be allowed to be a part of Star Trek is is an incredible honor. Um, to play the first gay couple. Um, on the series is surreal, but to do it with someone that you have loved and respected for almost 20 years. Um, and more than 20 years. More than 20 years. It's more than tw it is more yeah. than 20 years. Um, <laughs> wow, I can't do math. Yeah. Uh, so is, is, you know, it's overwhelming, really, um, that we get to create this together. Um, and the writers have really given us a lot to play with here, and um, it is a... a a wealth of material, especially this season. I have a really, one of my best friends is a huge longtime fan of, of Star Trek and a member of the LGBT community and uh, has been, he has let me know like how much they've been hungering for this kind of representation. So I have a very, you know, I have this sort of abstract notion of it and then a very personal notion of it because of my really good friend who, who told me. And then the, the numbers of people who've messaged us and told us in person how much has meant has been incredible. So Alex, you actually directed the first episode of season two. What kind of tone did you want to set for the season with that episode? Um, I wanted it to be an adventure, a fun adventure. And, uh, you know, last year was all about war and that dictated a certain pace and a certain urgency and a certain uh, darkness. And with the introduction of Captain Pike and the arrival of the Enterprise, there's a different tone that comes in and there's a mystery and this is a very emotional season because it's also a brother-sister story it's about Spock and his relationship with Michael and and uh, I think that what the fun part of it for me was actually getting to watch the Enterprise bridge crew show up and deal with the Discovery bridge crew and there's a lot of humor in them kind of getting to know each other so uh, I think you can expect to have a lot of fun. I just wanted how you go about striking that balance of delivering something new that kind of honors what's gone before bringing in new, vi um, new viewers and then sort of satisfying the, the Trekkies. The writing staff and the producerial staff are made up of people who are diehard fans, people who liked it, and then people who were new to it entirely. And with that, you're able, striking the balance is what the daily conversation is about. You know, how do you make it accessible? And I'm, I'm definitely a person who will raise my hand and say, wait, not everyone knows that this happened. We have to be a little more clear that in canon, you know, XYZ occurred. So 
it's been important for us. I mean, the biggest thing has been honoring what came before, but making it feel unique, because it has to feel like a unique experience. And what about the, the makeup and getting into costume and everything? Has that evolved at all for season two? Does it take a little bit less time? And what are practical things like getting a glass of water and lunch and that kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I, the, the makeup process has gotten down to an hour and a half a day for me, which is mercifully short. Uh, but now the artistry that you see takes months, though. The sculpting, the pre-painting, the, the design work, that's all been done. Getting it on to me, though, is, is very proficient now with uh, James McKinnon, who le leads the, the prosthetics department. Uh, he, he's good at what he does, and he's gotten very fast at it, thank heaven, for, for my sake. Uh, eating is, I, you know, if, I can t if you can, rule of thumb, if you can talk and breathe through your mouth, you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> Straws, I guess, are useful as well, and soup, yeah, yeah. soup and things. Yeah. And as an actor, when did you first find out that Spock was going to be your brother, and what was your reaction to that? Oh, I knew from the very, very beginning. Yes, I knew from the very beginning that they had placed Michael Burnham in that institution of a family. <laughs> you know, Sarah, Amanda, and Spock. So that was, th that was one of the things I was most excited about, actually. So you had to keep that secret. Yeah, well done. <laughs> um, and what was your reaction to um, how season one was received? It was great. We were so proud of it. And, you know, especially when you're making something that is so beloved by so many people, you're more nervous about how people are going to feel about it. So the fact the fans especially embraced it was great. What's it like getting your... Um, Tongues around, I guess, the um, the medical jargon and the scientific um, jargon. How's that? <laughs> um, it's a little more challenging for some of us than others. His first day <laughs> on the set, you know, not only did he, you know, he's he's been a Star Trek fan himself. Yeah. He dreamed about being on the show. Then he's on the show. So his first scene was on the bridge, which is a very intimidating set unto itself. Yeah. He's wearing the medical white uniform, which is this incredible uniform. And I'm the only one who wears it. The yeah. iconic one. And in that scene, he had tons of jargon. It's all it was. Yes. It was all it was. So, <laughs> but, you know, we, he, he did it. But I it was, carried you know. through. It was not, it was not easy. <laughs> I wish they'd given me a little, light heart, a little more lighthearted fare to begin with, but it worked out. I, I showed up. And what does having a whole series to play with allow you, compared with um, being restricted to a feature film or even mm -hmm. like a series of movies? You know? Well, having worked in the films, and I had a great time on those movies, uh, the difference is that you know two hours versus thirteen hours. You get to go a lot deeper um, and explore different combinations of characters that you would not otherwise get to do in two hours. So it's a much deeper dive. Have you heard about any um, people calling their daughters Michael? You know, I think I think I've heard one story, and it was sort of like through the grapevine. So I didn't speak to the person myself. But I think I did hear through the grapevine that someone knew someone that they think named their daughter Michael. <laughs> and I was like, what? I love the relationship between Tilly and Burnham in um, season one. What did you enjoy about creating that on-screen relationship with uh, Sonequa? Well, I was, yeah, I mean, I had a great scene partner. Sonequa was just an incredible actor and a really wonderful person. So I felt very, very lucky um, to get to work with her. And then as, as a character, I think that Burnham has just an expertise and an experience and a bearing that mm. Tilly has a lot to learn from. She was really, really happy to make a friend. I feel like season two is defined by our characters' relationships and their ability to really enjoy one another and bond more with one another in a way we didn't have time to do because of the war last season. The Discovery um, series is set about 10 years before the original series. That's right. Um, is the ultimate intention to take us sort of right up to where that one began? Um, we are going to synchronize with canon in, in uh, surprising ways. So you will, we will lead into canon this season, um, uh, but uh, there is still a 10-year gap between now and, and when Kirk and Spock are aboard the Enterprise. We saw the Enterprise at the end of the last season. How does sort of the arrival of the Enterprise um, in the series affect season two, would you say? Well. The minute that you have Captain Pike walk on the ship in his iconic TOS uniform, I just think it sets this tone. And, you, you know, I think for fans especially, you're going to lean in more. But also, he brings with him this captain-like quality. And it's been fun bringing those two worlds together and having our show kind of catch up with TOS a little. And you're involved in the Jean-Luc Picard um, series mm -hmm. as well. Is that going to be completely standalone or does it link into Discovery? No, it's totally standalone. Has, it won't have anything to do with Discovery. Totally separate. We want to make sure that if you watch different Star Trek shows, you're getting a different experience from each show. So it doesn't all feel like the same thing. And what kind of stage are you at with that, that project? We, we just started the writer's room. So we're four weeks into the writer's room, which is really, really exciting. 
it's such a family kind of feel above mm-hmm. this, um, above the ship, and kind of dysfunctional family at times. But mm-hmm. um, what about you as actors in real life? Do you get time to hang out when the cameras oh, aren't yeah. rolling? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're a family for sure, and we hang out all the time. We we have so much fun together. We spend it. We're, we're very busy, but we spend as much time as we can together and foster that because I think those relationships are really solidified outside of work as well. So yeah, we definitely do that, and we play imaginary blow darts as well, which is fun. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey. hey.